Hey guys, this is Shelby with the Rogers Public Library. So this week for Full Steam Ahead, I wanted to talk to you guys about foam and bubbles. Um, so foams and bubbles have actually, um, especially soap bubbles, have a lot to do with geometry. Um, but first I want to talk to you a little bit about how they form, right? So um, in this picture, we have uh, soapy water, right? So this is a solution. There's a lot of chemicals that are mixed together with the water. Um, and what uh, bubbles are, specifically soap bubbles, is there are pockets of air trapped inside of this solution. So they're what's called a colloid, or specifically a foam. Anything, anytime you have pockets of air trapped inside of a liquid or a solid, you call it a foam. Um, so, you know, bu their bubbles are easy to make. You can use soapy water like this, or you can use, um, you know, a bubble solution that you buy at the store. And they look pretty cool. Um, you can make big ones. You can make... Yeah. You can make tiny ones too. And one thing that you'll notice right away is that all of the bubbles are round. Um, so the reason that bubbles are round actually has to do with the way that water molecules are shaped. So water is H2O, right? Or it's got two hydrogen atoms like this, the little white parts, and one um, oxygen atom, which is the red part. Um, and so you notice that they're on different sides, right? The oxygen's over here, and the hydrogen's over here. And because of that, it kind of acts like a little magnet, and water molecules are attracted to each other really strongly. Um, so strongly, in fact, that, that if you separate them, they pull back together. Um, and so what's happening with the so uh, with the bubble is when it forms, there's air trapped between the water molecules, but it, the water molecules want to be as close together as possible. And it turns out, so if you have a volume, right, you have an, a certain amount of stuff, like you can say a gallon or a liter or whatever, um, the smallest surface area that will enclose that shape is always a sphere. Right? So that's why um, when you blow up balloons, they turn into spheres and not cubes or pyramids or anything like that. And that's why when you blow a bubble, even if you blow it, blow it out of a, a bubble wand that's shaped like a star or um, a triangle, it's going to turn into a, a sphere too. Um, and speaking of bubble wands, they're actually pretty hard to find. So I'm not using one. Um, I have a straw. Um, this is, They're pretty easy to use, although you might want to... Um, poke a hole in it just so you don't swallow any accidentally. And then this bubble wand is made out of a, um, a pipe cleaner and then the, the neck of a water bottle. So it works really well, I found, compared to just using a, a pipe cleaner or a piece of wire or something like that. So you can blow nice big bubbles out of it. Um, so when you have one bubble, it's gonna form a sphere or something resembling a sphere. Um, but it gets a little bit more complicated when you have more than one bubble. I'm going to try to break these up. So you have two bubbles. One of them will bow into the other, and that's because there's actually a difference in the pressure, and that has to do with the size. Um, so you can ignore those arrows for now, but see, this, um, this picture kind of shows that um, the smaller bubble bows into the larger bubble. And because smaller volumes have higher pressure than lower volumes, right? Um, we talked about that when we talked about gases. Um, but then, as far as these arrows are concerned, is so the bubbles are meeting up together at angles of 120 degrees. There are actually only two angles that bubbles meet up with each other. There's 120 degrees, or they can meet up at 109 degrees. Um, and so that, that doesn't really mean a lot. Um, if you just, if you don't know a lot about geometry, that's not super uh, helpful or specific, but it is something that kind of explains why bubbles act in specific ways and how we see these repeated angles um, always forming up and the bubbles rearranging themselves um, whenever you add more bubbles to this area. Um, but as far as 109 degrees, um, that's that, um, that's sometimes called the tetrahedral angle. So what we have here is a, a tetrahedron, right? It's um, a three-dimensional shape made out of triangles. Um, and inside of it, you can see the four films from the four sides are all meeting up at this little point in the middle. 
Um, and that's the same angle that that soap that bubbles will meet up the same way that soap foam will meet up. Sometimes this is called um, minimal surfaces, right? Because the bubbles, because the water molecules are attracted together so strongly, they're forming a minimal surface. Sometimes it can be simple, like the tetrahedral shape, or when you just have three or four bubbles. Sometimes it can be really complicated. So this, this is called a weir phalanx structure. So if you have a bunch of bubbles and they're all the same size, they'll form really weird shapes. Um, there's one, it's called a peridohedron, and then there's another one called the truncated hexagonal trapezohedron, right? So these are oddballs, right? This is made out of a bunch of tiny pentagons, so five-sided shapes um, that aren't, uh, they're a little lopsided. Um, and then this one has the same pentagons on it, but it also has um, some hexagons. And they stack together in such a way that they will in they have a very small surface compared to the volume that they have. Um, actually, the smallest surface of any shapes that we know of, like in the entire known universe. There might be smaller uh, uh, shapes that enclose areas better than these, but we haven't found them yet. So that's it's kind of a big deal. And people only discovered these shapes or the pattern that they make together in like the 1990s. Um, and speaking of that, there's actually like um, scientists and math people who go into work and they just study bubbles all day. Like it's, it's kind of, they're so complicated that you can just, that can be your job. You can be a bubble scientist. Um, but we're, we're, I think, kind of covered on bubble science for now. And I want to talk a little bit about bubble art. Um, so you can use bubbles to make foams um, and they can turn out pretty good. Um, so these aren't made with um, the bubble solution. What they are made with is um, spray shaving cream and glue. If you mix them together, you can add a little food dye and make foam like this. Um, I added a little bit of red food dye. If you don't add food dye, it'll end up like this, but it's kind of squishy and it's really cool to look at. Um, of course, it can go wrong. Um, if it takes too long to dry, then all the bubbles will pop in the shaving cream and you'll end up with this kind of weird plasticky surface. But it's still pretty cool um, just to look at. So that's some, one fun thing you can do. Um, you can also make a bunch of bubbles at once and put them on a piece of paper. So I found that the easiest way to do this is to use a straw and just go It works a little bit better if you use it in a cup like this. So, and you can get a bunch of bubbles that way um, and put it on a piece of paper and you'll see these, um, the formation of these um, weird geometrical patterns like that. Um, you can also just do this. You can just blow bubbles on a piece of paper and when they pop, they'll make interesting shapes. So we're using um, these bubbles that I've added a little bit of liquid watercolor to on this color splash. You, you can also use food dye. It, it'll work about the same. Um, and when you do this, you get tiny circles and little splatters of paint. Um, and you can get really cool artwork. Um, I made this one. So um, it's weird. It, the bubbles kind of, or the bubble liquid kind of, float down the page and it's got this little like lining effect. Um, but it turned out pretty cool. And all I used for this was I used um, a bubble wand like this and I used bubbles um, and a little bit of, of, of paint. Yeah, so that's the art part. Um, and then I wanted to finish off with an experiment. Um, so I'm this, I, I'm gonna let you guys try to guess what this is. Um, it's a very weird substance. It's kind of, it's, it looks almost like a cloud. It's very flaky um, and it smells really nice. Um, so this is a, this is a foam um, and it's, and it's a soap foam, right? Um, it's not a soap bubble or a foam made out of soap bubbles. It's actually made out of solid soap. Um, one thing to note is that when you use bubble solution, it doesn't actually have soap in it. Soap has a technical definition um, where it's made out of um, a base like lye, um, which is sometimes called sodium um, hydroxide. 
um, and animal fat. So if we look at the ingredients, and this doesn't have that in it. This has um, detergents in it. Um, it probably has sodium lauryl sulfate in it, which is um, a chemical that's made, um, it, it's synthesized, and it works a lot like a soap does, but it's not technically soap. But this, this is ivory soap, and it is a soap. So you look at the ingredients. It has sodium toluate, sodium palmate, sodium palm kernelate. So um, what are those? Um, well, they have sodium hydroxide in them. They also have tallow and palm oil. And, or palm kernel oil, um, so it's technically a soap, but that's not actually what lets the bubbles form. So if you look at this soap, it's um, it's not like other soaps um, because when it's made, there's like a a whipping process to it. It's kind of it looks kind of puffy, right? If you break it open, you'll see there's little um pores in it and that's because there's actually um when they whip it when they make the soap they whip it together really fast and it makes a foam um and there's little air bubbles trapped inside so when they're like this the air bubbles are really tiny but we know that if we increase the, the temperature of a gas then the volume increases um so how you make this is you just take a bar of soap of ivory soap and you put it on a plate and you put it in the microwave and you turn it on um, and it puffs up and it gets really, really huge. Um, so this is the amount of foam that one bar of soap makes, but when it's actually in the microwave, it gets a lot bigger than this. So you might want to just use half a bar or even a quarter of a bar at first. Um, it's also going to um, make your microwave still smell really fresh, kind of, you know, it, ha it has a fragrance to it. Um, so you should be worried about um, you also need to use fresh soap. So this is, we got this from the store about a week or two ago, um, so it's pretty new. Um, if you don't use fresh soap, soap, it'll end up like this. So it didn't inflate that much, and it kind of burned. Um, apparently, if you put um, soap that doesn't have bubbles in it in the microwave, it'll catch on fire. So you need to be, you need to be careful about that. Um, so fresh soap and adult supervision. Those are the two um, very important steps for this particular experiment. And you don't want to touch it while it's this hot because that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope you guys had fun and I'll see you next week.